Hi everyone, it's Jillian. Welcome to my presentation. Waves are everywhere. There are sound waves, electromagnetic waves, and even arm waves. Today, you'll be learning about ocean waves, the law of physics governing their motion, and how climate change has been affecting the waves in the Arctic Ocean. First off, what are ocean waves? Ocean waves are a type of gravity waves. Gravity waves are propagating disturbances that travel along the interface between two fluids, such as the air-sea interface, and whose dynamics are dominated by the effects of gravity. We can understand this by the balance of the generating force and restoring force. When a generating force, such as wind, blows on the surface of water, it causes disturbances. If these disturbances are small, the restoring force is the surface tension of the water. Such millimeter scale waves that are restored by capillarity and surface tension are called capillary waves. We won't be looking at these today. Instead, when a strong wind blows on the surface of water, it breaks the hydrogen bonds and the parcel of water is displaced from hydrostatic equilibrium, such that the restoring force is now gravity. This explains the big waves that we see in our oceans. Gravity waves encompass a rather wide spectrum, spanning across more than six orders of magnitude. But today, we'll be focusing on wind waves, specifically in the Arctic Ocean. We don't hear much about the Arctic Ocean, and that's because it's the smallest and shallowest of the world's five major oceans, and historically, it stays pretty quiet. In the past, perennial sea ice cover covered about half of the Arctic Ocean. The extensive and thick sea ice cover helped to damp both surface and internal waves. However, due to global warming, Perennial sea ice area has reduced by approximately 40%, and mean ice thickness has halved. This extends the fetch over which waves can form and mature. Higher waves also occur more often due to the increased frequency and intensity of storms, breaking up even more ice. So the Arctic Ocean is waking up. We can also see this by a strengthening of inertial motion in the Arctic Basin in recent years. Before we continue, let's take a quick minute to understand how inertial motion is derived and what it tells us. Inertial motion is a type of unsteady motion in which particles move at a constant velocity if not subject to any other forces. Let's examine a wind-driven current in an open ocean on our rotating Earth. If the wind driving the current suddenly stops, the water will continue moving at its velocity due to its momentum. Apart from the equator, Coriolis acceleration is non-zero and acts at right angles to the motion. This gives rise to a circular motion with a constant velocity. We can derive this simply. The equation of motion of an element of the ocean is expressed as such, where c is the Coriolis acceleration and f is the total applied force per unit mass. Since we are considering a scenario of unsteady motion and thus the absence of applied forces, we equate f to zero. To solve this equation, we can expand it and write it in terms of velocity. We can then use complex numbers and set s to equal u plus iv, where i is the imaginary unit equal to square root negative 1. Therefore, this equation becomes... The solution to the equation is where s0 is the initial velocity. As we know, complex numbers are two-dimensional numbers that lie on a circle in the complex number plane therefore telling us that the motion is circular. We can also calculate the period and radius of the inertial motion by equating the Coriolis force to centripetal force. Indeed, a parcel of water in the ocean is found to describe a spiral pattern of motion, which diminishes as its initial energy is dissipated. So back to the Arctic. Reduced sea ice thickness, cohesiveness of the cover, and area as a result of global warming indicates a mechanical weakening of the ice cover. As such, less damping occurs and the amount of energy radiating towards the deep ocean via inertial waves is likely to have increased. This may result in the mixing of warmer, deeper ocean layers, heating the mixed layer and affecting surface fluxes. The reduced ice cover is also increasing the fetch. It has been found that the reduction of sea ice cover from 1992 to 2014 has caused wave height, wavelength, wave phase speeds, and frequency of swells to increase. That may sound scary enough, but it doesn't end there. The more aggressive ocean is contributing to significant coastal erosion of an average 1 to 2 meters per year in the Arctic region. This can pose serious threat to indigenous communities, 
ecosystems, and the thawing of permafrost. Well, I hope you managed to recap the basics of inertial motion and gravity waves, and learned how we might apply this topic to the Arctic Ocean. Bye! We're running through this space